Hello, welcome back. This is Michael. Welcome to the Joy of Code, episode number 10, I believe. Uh, and today, as promised, we will um, really turn our turtle example into a playable game by getting a game character that we can actually control. Uh, when I run my project now as it is, we see that both the snakes and the turtle run around randomly and the turtle when it happens to run across the lettuce eats the lettuce and snakes eat the turtle and we have at the moment no control over how they are running and where they're going. Okay, now the turtle is supposed to become our game character so this is the one we want to control with the keyboard and the snakes should continue to run around randomly as they are right now so they are good to go and the turtle is what we want to work on. Here now we have the movement of the turtle defined by the random turn and turn and edge. These are the two methods that determine the movement of uh, the turtle that says that when we hit the edge we're turning and randomly every now and then we turn as well. We want to remove both of those and replace that with keyboard control turning. So um, we want to get rid of those methods. If we're not calling them we also don't need to define them so we can delete the methods as well. That is the random turn method. I don't need that anymore. Um, and instead of turning at the edge I want to have a method called check keys which checks for the keyboard being used. Um, the comment I remove, the code I remove because all of that the comment will not be true anymore. The code I don't need anymore. So what I'm doing here is I'm making a new method called check keys. Um, the check keys method, uh, what I want to do there is I want to check my keyboard and to see whether certain keys are being pressed and if they are I want to turn. So what I'm intending to do is to use my cursor keys, the left and right cursor key to control my turtle. And I can do that quite easily with an if statement. I can say if my left cursor key is being pressed then turn left and if my right cursor key is being pressed turn right. So remember how we write an if statement it's the keyword if and then we need a condition which I need to fill in in a moment so I say if my and I need to fill something in there and here is the body of the turn. Turning left is really quite easy. We know how to do that. We can turn and remember a negative amount was left turn so I say I turn minus five degrees. Um, so the body of this statement is quite easy. We, that is doing a small left turn. Now the question is how can I check for a key press on my keyboard? We can go back to our, oh sorry, I need to go to the main window. In the main window in the help menu is the Greenford class documentation. I can open that up. That now starts my web browser and goes to the web page. Here my window is much too large for the recording, so I'll make that a bit smaller. It is again in the Greenford class um, where we will find the method that we need. Up oh, my browser wants access here. Okay there is the documentation of the Greenfoot class and here if we look at the methods there is a method is key down that is the method that is interesting for us at the moment the is key down method says check whether a given key is currently pressed down the parameter type is a string it's the name of a key and it gives us a boolean so let's look at that in code that method was in the Greenfoot class so I write Greenfoot dot is key down. Oh, I think that is a capital D. Um, it, by the way, if you only sort of vaguely remember what the method is called and you don't fully remember it and you know it was Greenfoot and something, you can hit control space. So if you write the class Greenfoot and the dot and then you are not sure what the method was, hit control space and that pops up a dialog which is called a code completion dialog um, with all the methods available in that class and if you sort of vaguely remember if you start typing it will narrow down so if I type is 
it shows only the method starting with the word is. And there is, in fact, in the Greenfoot class in this case, only one, so that's already the method we want. So as soon as you have selected here the method you actually mean, just hit return and that will insert the method name into your code. So that's a quick way to look up and insert methods from other classes. So there it wants to know the name of the key I'm interested in. The name is written in double quotes. The type of this parameter to is key down is a string. A string in Java is a bit of text, a word or a sentence or um, or a single character. And it doesn't matter how long it is, but um, it wants the name of the key. And I use left because left is the name of my left arrow key on my keyboard. Every key on the keyboard has a name for the normal character keys, that character is just the name. For example, the name of the A key is just A. The name of the B key is B and so on. And then all the non-printable keys, like the function keys and the cursor keys, have name to, names too. For example, F1 is the key, is the function key 1. And as I said, left is the name of my left arrow key. So the cursor block, the four keys are called left, right, up and down. So here I'm saying if my left arrow key is being pressed, then I want to turn a little bit left. And I really need to turn only a little bit because this will probably be um, picked up several times. The act method, as we've seen before, runs very, very quickly. So if I press it even a short amount of time, the act method will run several times already, even if I press it for only half a second. And so it will turn five degrees several times and eventually you know, over the accumulated effect turn more than that. So this should take care of the left turn. And oops, I didn't mean to do that, I meant to go up. Then I can copy this, so I select it, copy and paste um, to duplicate it, and I do the same for the right. So I say if my right key is being pressed, and then here I turn it to plus five, then I turn five degrees. So here I write my comment for the method. Oops, I can't type here. Keys are being pressed and turn if they are. Okay. And then here I've got now my check keys method. I actually have to call it now as well here. So I write the call to my check keys method here into my act method. So in the turtle now moves forward, then it checks for key input and then tries to eat the lettuce to see whether we're running across some lettuce. Try, let's try that out. Here we have our program and I run. And yes, I'm pressing my left and right cursor key and I can control the turtle. And now I can try to eat the lettuce without the snakes getting me. Oh. <laughs> I can do it, I can do it. Ah. Actually, you can make the game um, harder or easier by firstly putting in uh, a s different amount of snakes. Oh, that got me. Um, by putting in more snakes, of course, it becomes harder. You can also make it harder by making the turn of the turtle a bit slower. So if you can't turn that quickly, if you can turn only more slowly, it actually becomes harder to play. Or you could modify the speed of movement. For example, here, my turtle moves at speed 4 and my snake moves at the same speed. So you can, of course, if you want to make them move at different speeds, if the snake is faster than the turtle, for example, it becomes much harder to get away from the snake and so on. So you can experiment with those parameters, the speed, the number of snakes, the, the you know, uh, uh, quickness of the turn and so on. But here, for the first time now, we have an actual playable version where we can start playing our game. Do it yourself, try it out, have fun with it. Until next time, bye-bye.